Partners, Jordan here, and today I'm going to show you a quick and effective way to help your model stand out more on the tabletop. The technique we're going to be looking at is called Object Source Lighting, or OSL for short, which is basically a fancy way to say glow effects. Specifically, we're going to look at making the power couplings and runes on a Stormfang gunship glow. I'll be using an airbrush to do this effect. So, grab your airbrush, and when you're ready, let's get started. Here you see we have our Stormfang gunship that was already painted to uh, pretty much a high tabletop level. I also already have a glow on it, a very Games Workshop style glow, but I wasn't too happy with that. It was a little too simple. I want to try to give it a little something extra. Uh, the first color we're coming in with is Lagoon Blue by Minotaur, and I'll be spraying that with the Iwata Revolution. It's a very good starter brush. I'm spraying it about 20-25 PSI. And you'll notice that when I'm spraying the runes, I'm not actually spraying the runes themselves. I'm trying to trace around the runes because this first color that we're laying is the ambient glow, uh, the furthest part of the glow effect from the runes themselves. And pretty much 90 to 95% of this is going to be covered up by the next color we come in with, so there's no real reason to worry if you make it too difficult to make it very drastic. I'm coming in, I'm spraying the small pipes here. Alright, now we're hitting the runes to the side. These are very simple. You pretty much just throw it through the spray. Um, this is, like I said, going to be the widest of the spray on the runes. So you want to go ahead and give them just a little more than you plan on giving the rest of the glow effect. Next color we're coming in with is Sky Blue by Minotaur. It's a very nice color. It's almost an off-white. It's so bright. It gives a glow effect all by itself. And we're coming in and we're spraying around the small tubes, tracing around them. This time we are spraying mostly the tubes. Um, we are going to be coming in with white later to finish off the glow effect, but we want to make sure that we have a good basis for all the tubes. See me going in there and spraying the large couplings in the center. Uh, the center was actually filled completely almost with Lagoon Blue, and we're just kind of spraying around the pipes with the sky blue. Coming in on the runes, spraying a slightly smaller area, about 95% of what we sprayed with Lagoon Blue. Still tracing around the, um, the runes themselves. We'll be filling them with the color a little later, so it's not too detrimental what you get inside the runes. I'm coming back. I wasn't quite happy with how bright it was. I just wanted to brighten up a little bit more. Now when you're spraying through the airbrush, you want to take your time and allow the paint to, to slowly apply. You don't want to try to spray right away. And if you start getting this flecking or or speckling pattern, that's the result of your paint being either a little too thin or having some dry paint on the brush. So you want to take your, your old toothbrush and rub it over the needle and make sure that you're clear. Next color we're coming in with is Minotaur White or Snow White. Uh, white is a very notoriously fickle color to spray, so you want to be very, very careful when you're spraying it. Apply the paint slowly and allow it to build up. Remember, too little is much better than too much. If it's too much, you're going to have to go back, and who knows how many stages back you're going, but it is not fun, let me tell you. When we're spraying these smaller tubes in here, we're not actually spraying the entire tube. We're just spraying more towards the top. I mean, perhaps not the most realistic effect, but we're not necessarily going for realistic here as much as we're going for what looks cool, and I think this looks pretty cool. This glow effect that we're trying to achieve, this is as drastic of a glow effect as I would put on a model. Um, See, we're coming in and spraying the small tubes again more towards the center. Remember, overspray is your friend. That's the reason that we're not actually painting the tubes white, we're spraying them white. So, that a tiny little bit of overspray will hit the area around them and give the impression the subtle transition of a glow. Coming in and hitting the large tubes, this is where the largest part and the brightest part of the glow effect is going to be. Make sure you cover the tubes completely in white. Now we're going to come in with a little Baharoth blue and mix that in a roughly 3 to 1 ratio with white sky. We're going to thin this mixture way down, almost to a wash, about 4 or 5 to 1 with Linnea medium. You 
see when I come in with the medium, I'm not actually mixing all of the paint with the medium, only as much as I need until I get the consistency I want. I do want this quite thin because we're tracing the inside of the rooms with this paint using our fine detail brush, of course. Now, you don't really need to be terribly careful at this stage. Um, if you get a little too much on the outside of the room, you can quickly wipe it off with your finger, just like I did right there. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. But this water, uh, watered down paint should be very thin and it should flow into the rooms rather nicely. If it does uh, end up on the outside of the rooms a tiny little bit, it's okay because it'll blend itself down and give more of the impression of a powerful glow. Now, this is the inside of the glow in one of the, uh, the most drastic parts that Baharat Blue gives us a real nice turquoise and electric blue and that really helps sell the glow effect. Well now we're done and it looks a little bit like this. You see that that white really gives us the impression of an intense glow where the darker blue towards the outside gives the impression of the glow dying down. Now remember when you're spraying especially at high pressures like we're spraying between 20 and 25 psi you want to allow the paint to build slowly. We're in no rush here to get the color onto the, the model. And it's better to take it slow and allow it to build up in a very steady and controlled manner than it is to do it all at once and make a mistake where you have to go back and try to fix. This tutorial was a ton of fun to make and I hope you learned something today. Remember, take it slow, take it easy, and don't be afraid to give it a try.